Today we are going to talk about how to use Abinit program to calculate the band structures of graphene. And also we are going to talk about how to get plot the Dirac cone of graphene as well. So first of all, we notice that graphene is a two-dimensional material and with a zero band gap uh, semiconductor. And uh, so here are the two lattice vectors in the xy plane, a1 and v2, a2 defines the graphene in a two-dimensional plane. And I also showed you the picture for the a1 and a2 here. This is a snapshot of the graphene. And uh, the primitive cell of a graphene has two carbon atoms. And their positions are 0, 0, 0, 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 0. And uh, the two atoms are labeled as, with the blue circles here in the, fig, in the figure 1. The first stuff we're going to do is try to relax the lattice per, the parameter of the graphene. So here is the Abinid input file for relaxing the lattice parameters. I set the OPT cell equal to 2 as before to fully relax the geometry of the graphene. So this including relax the lattice parameters as well. And uh, we are using a key point mesh, which is 12 by 12 by 1. So it's 1 here in the z direction because uh, there's no periodic periodicity in the z direction. And the graphene is put in the xy plane. And uh, so the r prime is defined here. You can see that the first one is 0 0.866 minus 0 0.5. And uh, so that is corresponding to A2. And uh, the second one is 0 0.866, uh, 0 0.5. So that is part corresponding to A1. And uh, so the two atoms in the primitive cell is defined as 0, 0, 0, and, uh, which is this guy. Another one is 2 thirds, 2 thirds, 0, so which is uh, this guy. So once you run this Abinid program calculation, it will going to uh, relax the geometry, and uh, your relaxed lattice parameter will be this one from the R profile. In the second step, we are going to construct the band structure of the graphene. Again, with the similar to the tutorial five, and we first need to draw the first Brillouin zone. And for this uh, honeycomb, uh, honeycomb structure, and the first Brillouin zone looks like this. It's a honeycomb as well. And it's defined by B1 and uh, B2. So the B1 and the B2 is defined based on the real space uh, lattice uh, vectors, A1, A2, and, the, and this uh, z direction. And the B1 is defined uh, like A2 cross z divided by the area of uh, the graphene in the primitive cell. And the B2 is defined as 2 pi times z cross product with A1 divided by the area. And uh, so once you have B1 and B2, you can get the honeycomb structure for the graphene in the first Brillouin zone. Again, uh, in many cases, we just need to plot the band structure on the high symmetrical point in the first Brillouin zone. So here we're just going to do it on the along the gamma point to the key point, and also along the key point to the end point, and also along the end point to gamma point. So this is three dashed red line segments will be the lines we're going to do the band structure uh, plotting. Similar to the tutorial five, and uh, we just need to do two calculations in Abinit. You can just set NTD set equal to two to Abinit, which means that you're going to do two calculations. In the first step, we're just going to do an ordinary DFT simulation with a key point of 12 by 12 by one. And after that, in the step two, we are going to load the electron density from the step one by using the get then keyword. Minus one means that I'm going to load the previous DFT simulation and density. 
and uh, I I S C F minus two means that a non self consistent constant DFT simulation will be performed based on the constant potential calculated from the density from the first step, and uh, so N D K and K B T bonds define um, the three line segments here. You can see that the first one starting from the gamma point. 0, 0, 0. The second one, we go to the key point, which is go from here to here. And uh, then we go to the end point, which is half, half, 0. So which is uh, here, we go from K to M, and then go from M back to gamma. And the uh, NDVK uh, defines the resolution of the key points along each line segment. And so it's uh, uh, 50, 50, 50, which means that we are going to have 50 K points along each line segments. For more details about KBT bounds and the NDVK, you can look up the manual for Avenit. And after the calculation, you will get the, N the eigenvalues along the gamma K, M, gamma line segments in a file, which is this one. The underscore EIG, eigenvalue file format. And uh, if you take a look at of that file, you will see that uh, the first line is a comment line, which tells you what's going on in, the, in this file. And uh, we just need to grab all the eigenvalues from this file. So we use this awk Linux command to do it. So here is are the eigenvalues along each for each key point for these eight bands here. You can see that we have eight columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight bands here. To save the space, the rest of the lines are skipped. And then you give these uh, eight columns to this variable EE in MATLAB. And then you can use this MATLAB script to plot these eight bands in the same plot, doing eight different uh, plotting in MATLAB. So here will be the band structure you will have. And, uh, and I also labeled gamma k m gamma point on this graph as well by myself. And uh, you can see that we have uh, 50 points go from gamma to k, and the 50 points go from k to m, and the 50 points go from m to gamma. Uh, the band structure is very cool. You can see that we, ha we have only one crossing point here from the conduction band and the valence band. And that's the uh, direct point. So you have a single crossing point between the gamma point between the conduction and the valence band. And this uh, crossing happened at the key point. And uh, if you go back to the two dimensional uh, first spring zone, you can see that for this guy, we have a six key point one, two, three, four, five, six. They are corresponding to the six corners here. So that's why for graphene, you have six Dirac cones uh, from, the, from the simulation. And all of them happened at the six corners here. OK, in step three, we are going to plot the Dirac cone and uh, so first, we are going to define the region in the first Brillouin zone that we are going to plot because we are going to make a three-dimensional plot for the Dirac cone. So we are going to define this two-dimensional plane in the first Brillouin zone and define the, for the B1 and the B2 in this way. And the B1 is bigger than negative 0.5 and smaller than 0.5. And the B2 goes from 0 to, min to 0 0.5. And uh, so the green area here denote the domain defined by this. And you can see here, this uh, green domain contains just one key point, which is k prime at the corner. And we know that the direct cone happens at, at the uh, corner. So in other words, in the following parts, we will see only one direct cone from the plot. This is the Abinit uh, input file for doing the calculation. 
And again, we are doing two calculations in one uh, input file. So for the step one, we perform the uh, ordinary content DFT simulation with 12 by 12 K points in the XY plane and one K point in the Z direction. And uh, then in the second step, we load the previous density and uh, compute the constraint potential for it and uh, did a non-self-consistent constraint DFT calculation. And uh, but we are doing a high density K point uh, calculation. So the now the K point match is 50 by 50 uh, because we want to sample this green area very densely to get a nice uh, direct cone in the plot. And after the calculation, and uh, you will you can try to process the upper file from Ebonit and uh, extract the K points coordinates and their eigenvalues for the eight bands in a simulation in a file like this. So here is the, the first several lines of this file. And you can see that the first three columns, they are corresponding to the X, Y, and the Z coordinates of the key points. The last uh, eight columns, they are corresponding to the eigenvalues of the eight bands. And I skipped uh, the rest of these lines to save the uh, space. So our MATLAB script will load this file and then do the plotting. And you see that I load this kpt underscore eigen file, which is this file in the MATLAB script. And uh, I uh, extract the length of uh, this file and I get all the key point to this file because we are only interested in uh, the K point in the XY plane. So that's why we only extracted the first two columns from this uh, uh, K points. And uh, we define B1, B2, which are B1 and B2 here. And uh, because these are the fractional coordinates of the K points, so that's why we need to convert them into the Cartesian coordinates of, of, of the K points. So we just do the KBT multiplied by the B vector, which formed by B1 and B2. We got the real space uh, coordinates of uh, the K points. So here I do the three dimensional plot and the plotting method follows this uh, link here. And uh, I just get the Cartesian coordinates for the K point, I give it to X, the Cartesian coordinates for the Y, the, for the key point, we give it to y, and the z value is uh, the eigen vectors. No, sorry, the eigen values of the eight bands. That's the z. Uh, then I do the three-dimensional plot using the command this, and uh, also use the try surf command to do the plot. So here is the part for the occupied states. And uh, similarly, you have uh, another part for the unoccupied bands as well. It's very similar, OK? So uh, in the end, you will get this plot. So here, I can just say that this is uh, the, the surface of the, of the band 8. And this is surface of the band uh, seven, okay. but because the band eight and the band seven, they're gonna meet here at the direct cone uh, position, which is a K prime. So that's why you, you can see the K, you can see the direct cone here. And we saw only one direct cone here because uh, this green domain only contains one corner here. Okay. So if you do the plot, if you sample a large area that contain all the six corners of this honeycomb, uh, structure, then you should be able to see six direct cones in the three-dimensional plot. Okay, so here is uh, the demonstration about how to get the band structure for graphene and how to do the three-dimensional direct cone plot for the graphene. And I hope this is helpful for you if you want to do some calculation on graphene. And thank you very much for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.